he has 30 PG. It's JC. His opponent in the bottom left in the red. Uh, for good game gaming, it's Dream. But again, as I was saying, uh, this format, WTL format, is predicated upon players one wanting because you have the counter map pick there are no bands which means that you actually it's very hard to two zero but for now dream's going for a proxy reaper here in this game number one it is of course inside and out let me fix my chair there we go uh, it is of course inside and out. it's a short map it's an aggressive map and jc's gonna get a probe on the other side of the map so he will have a good understanding of what exactly dream is going for and uh you like the you like the phone positioning too one of the cool things you can actually do um for those of you that are not aware there are a bunch of different tools that allow you to use your phone as your webcam and honestly your phone camera is probably better than your webcam in most instances so seems like that what jay she's doing we got the nice phone horizontal uh rect rectangular aspect ratio i know that's not super important but anyways interesting and the reaper's out SCV running forward as well, maybe looking for a bit of a scout, but not doing anything for the most part. And as JC, he's building that zealot. Now, the interesting thing we've started to see Protoss players do a little bit more as of late is they're skipping the zealot even when they know it's a proxy reaper. They're going and they're just relying on their Popul micro and getting out the adept as quick as possible because adepts don't take that long to build, especially if you chrono it. But no. JC is being as safe as humanly possible. So as the Reaper shows up in the main base here, he's going to find a Zealot, and that Zealot is going to eat the majority of the shot. So, well, actually, I like the use of the SCV here. It does mean that's a little bit easier for the Reaper to get some kills. So now Reaper dives around, but that means this SCV is really not taking too much damage just yet. But there comes the Adept. So, well, Dream has to run away, and he will not keep his he will keep his Reaper alive. And there's a second one on the way behind that. And remember, some of these probes are wounded. So maybe Dream can find a couple more, but for right now, he gets two. And there comes the second Reaper. Uh, okay. A Dream Bolt is, is a Reaper back actually pretty far away, but he's going to pair them up. And that means they three shot probe instead of two shot. And that does make life a little bit interesting, but you got to bring them together. A Dream is uh, trying to be very fancy with his Reaper control, but unfortunately, it's not a, it's not a Black Tie Gala. He does not need to be this fancy. He just, he just got to run in and maybe find some value, maybe find where the Adepts are not. And Dream behind this, he's adding two additional barracks, right? He is going into the 3 one, one, one type of setup. And, well, he's going to find the situation where it's only the Zealot, not the Adepts, but the Adept runs over fairly quickly. And JC's just getting into mid-game at this point. He's got a Twilight on the way. Makes sense. Uh, you, you, first of all, you're going to build a lot of units on the ground. Any sort of Stargate opener uh, It's just a little slowed down by the Reaper play. So, yeah, go Adepts. Or, not Adepts, excuse me, but go Twilight. And I was like going to say, oh, well, you know, you blink, but no, there's going to be Proxy Dark Shrine coming in from JC into this game. Number one with this snipe build, you hold on to the Reapers. And because the Reapers are on JC's side of the map. Well, it does mean that he's not scouting on the other side. The Reapers will have no idea about what's happening here so dream hope you're holding some scans buddy because this is a way this is a very easy way for Terran to get knocked out of the game now of course there is no gateway on the other side this is just going to be for the dark shrine because the dcs are going to warp in just a little bit slower but this is a fantastic response to what dream is doing because look at this his orbital is just now done and we can assume that he's going to drop a mule pretty much immediately again making up for that lack of economic development that he had earlier but this reaper in the main base getting a little bit of damage done good gr good grenade denies some mining and he kills a probe as well and next actually it is going to be able to get out it's not actually <laughs> the zealot from earlier the thing we were asking about uh, it's a little bit of a problem but there we go dt's they're warping in outside of dreams vision and the power that pilot is such a powerful thing you can warp you can warp units directly into your opponent's base it's gonna be three dt's off the top we have no scan in the mat in the natural maybe in the main the wall is going to get lifted but this is oh target that stim down this is a very exposed stim here and the scvs will not have surface area to repair this not easily so the stim is now gone and combat shields should be the next target a bunch of scvs as well there is the scan but the dts they're going to run away from the range for the most part in this bio i don't know how much is going to be able to get done now two dts will fall but 13 scvs 
already hitting the deck and that's the one scan that dream did have missile turret's gonna get knocked down here more invisible men up the gullet shove now in dream's face and i don't know how much he's gonna be able to do but there is a missile turret in the main base so that should be the end of that but the dt and the natural is saying other things but there we go there's the scan and that's gonna be a dead dark templar is the scan going to survive long enough for the missile turret to go up i don't think so dt this is your opportunity run in deny the missile turret oh he's gonna get it once again it's denied the bunker's denied and dream does not have a natural base whatsoever now jc has a dream of denying combat shields but that's not gonna happen combat shields are done but oh wait 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 oh killing that tech lab still was started again it's gonna get canceled again these dark templar these invisible men are causing havoc causing so many problems for dream in this game he will never have the tech that he needs and yes he is killing dark templar occasionally but he's not gonna have stim before eight minutes that is he's gonna have medevac sure and he's these bi the bio is a little bit tankier but all these add-ons are getting knocked down at the very least the missile turret has gone up and at the very least that missile turret or that final dark templar will fall but i don't know that that was enough here yes eventually okay there's the there's the vision on that pile and that will eventually fall but you gotta imagine these these dark templar from gc they've done enough they've done more than enough in this game At the very least, though, Dream does have his plus one, so his bio is going to fight well enough. I mean, the lack of, of stim is important, but it's a lot of plus one Marines with a combat shield. That is something at the very least, and the stim will now get done. <laughs> the fact that concussive shells and combat shields are done before stim is, is kind of crazy. And Dream will be able to knock down this Dark Shrine, so at the very least, he doesn't have to worry about Dark Templar running in as he's doing something elsewhere and really messing his day up even further. I mean, outside of the Dark Templar that already exist, on the map so where does dream go from here his stim is going to be done 8 15 8 20 something like that one and his army is not insignificant but jc's army is just bigger jc's up 20 work or 20 workers he's up about four army supply he's got charge finishing up for this push he's got a couple colossus third one's on the way Extended Thermal Lance will not be ready for this fight, which means Marauders can fight it just a little bit easier. They're only down one range instead of three. But this defensive positioning that JC has, I don't know how Dream is going to be able to break through this. So he does have his third base on the way. And I'm sorry, Toilet Brush, that we need to rem just command edit B. No brackets link here. The games happened this morning. Check. Liquipedia if you want. There we go. There's the updated bracket command. But now we do have two classes on the field. Third one on the way. Plenty of zealots. JC rounding out his tech, getting on up to six gas now, which means storms if he wants double robo disruptor if he wants whatever wherever he wants to go whatever his attack vector is whatever his tech vector i guess not even his attack vector necessarily well it is going to be wide open to him and it looks like he just wants to go into disruptors behind this wouldn't even be surprised really to see a dark shrine get built once again because hey late game dts they're pretty nice and now okay jc will sacrifice that he will sacrifice that templar uh, but he does get the scout off of exactly when Dream is taking the third base. And Jayshi may look to move out here. He's sitting up 30 army supply against the Terran who took a nine minute third base. That is not supposed to happen. Really, the Terran, for the, especially when they go for these 311 type of builds, they want to be leading in supply, at least in army supply, for pretty much the entirety of the mid game. But Jayshi's maxing out here. He's going to have 1-1 one, one on his on his army. He's getting that double robo, so he will have reinforcement potential on Disruptors, on Colossus, whatever he wants. But attacking into a turtled up Terran is not the easiest thing in the world. As this Marine will show up, and it's going to kill the Zealot. It's a slow warping. 
So, oh, okay, he's not gonna, he will get the Zealot. There we go, Stim is dropped. Zealot tries to run away, run away from the Stim, and actually it looks like it will be successful. And JC setting up a couple flanks here. He's got a bunch of Zealots on the north side. He's dropping down the rocks in the middle of the map, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him wait for a couple more disruptors to join the fray. But no, he's positioning in. And oh, Vikings get a couple of hot shots before this happens in earnest. But the tanks, they blink right side for the Stalkers do. And now the Liberator sieges up as well. But here come the Zealots on the north side from the right side. And oh, <laughs> the Disruptors, they're doing a great job too. So, Jay Sheet loses all of his Zealots. He's going to have to wait to warp in a little bit more. But again, this is inside now. It's a very short map. But he knocks down the tank. He knocks down a large portion of the tech here of dream's army and the disruptors are going to get targeted down but now it's really only stvs trying to keep dream alive and dream we talked about hey had this series was winnable to zero for him you no know, not this game apparently jayshi takes the one zero hey it's a sign. thank you so much two months in a row for the resub uh yes i will be at dreamhack atlanta i will be flying in on thursday night in the upper left, folks, in the blue. He's up 1-0 in this series. And again, this is a critical series for his opponent to win. It's Jayshi. In the upper right, in the red. Down one game. At least he can split. Hopefully, if you're a good game gaming fan, it is Dream. Am I excited to see Steadfast compete in group stage one? Absolutely. And I think... I hope. Who was in his group again? I need to go take a look. Liquipedia to my rescue. You got Foxer. You got Spirit and DNS. Oh, well. Sorry, Steadfast. You're playing a Protoss and you're playing Spirit. I, uh, I don't have too much hope for you advancing out of group stage, but maybe you can go and beat Foxer. But yes, I'm excited to go hang out with Dave. I've met him once in my life when I went up to Toronto um, this summer with my girlfriend. That was a lot of fun. And I'm excited to hang out with Dave, with, with Steadfast, and with Pig, and with Cats. He's going to be there. Or a bunch of people that I've worked online with for quite a while now, but I've never really met in person. And um, that really is the most exciting component of it. Also, hopefully some incredible StarCraft. Uh, if, we, if we as a community can go and hopefully... Hopefully, even get like 10% of how good the crowd was for the Fury matches of the CSGO Major. Well, it's going to be a good time. Because honestly, as good as the games were in Valencia, the crowd was kind of... Eh. And I get that part of it is, is maybe cultural. And there wasn't... A, the crowd wasn't massive. And it was hard for the mics to pick up the crowd noise because the, the entire convention center was super loud. But I believe... Let's do the NA crowd proud. As I forgot to tweet. What about Brazilians losing at home, Bacano Proto? Because unfortunately, Furia did not make the finals. And honestly, I feel bad for ESL. Because that was as much as I loved watching the Brazilians freak out about their teams just playing, not even winning. Um, the crowd in the, in the finals was less than exciting. And the crowd in half of the semis was less than exciting kind of reminiscent of like TI in Shanghai or something when you had a very obviously biased crowd who was only rooting for one subsection of the of the teams and then when they don't go a little bit further it's, it kind of diminishes from it a little bit um but anyway alien drop on the way for dream in this game number two and stargazers is a good map for it you have that position of the natural where you can drop you can run in and there's just a lot of coverage that you're going to try to find. But the Zelnaga on the flip side, Dream has not cleared it out. So, Jayshi is going to know what is coming here. There we go. He's getting the, he gets the scout on. There's really no position that the Medivac can run into where the Zelnaga will not see it. But 
knowing that it's there and denying the damage is a two totally different things three stalkers are here but that means they're not defending the mineral line we're not going to have any sort of block there and the hellions all four of them they find their line of four workers go down immediately but the stalkers well they're knocking down these hellions slowly enough but three hellions they one shot things so seven workers going to go down and it's going to be eight which is break even on a one base play on a two base play coming in from j from dream that's actually very nice for him and, and as a result he's up eight workers that works out very well for our Terran here on Stargazers. And I don't really see a lot of opportunity for counter pressure, but it's going to be Disruptor drops. Maybe, uh, maybe Colossus drops, whatever we're going to see. It's a very quick robo. Well, I'm sorry. As I say that, this might just be Colossus. First. This just might be Colossus Rush No Twilight, which is actually what it looks like it's going to be. I, mean, I Every time I see a, a robo bay before like 4.30, I, I get all excited. But Jay, she is not Nina. Yeah, it's a part of the reason, Baka no Proto, why I'm so excited for TI to go back to Key Arena in Seattle uh, next year. Which first of all, means there's maybe a small, small chance I can go attend. And uh, second of all, you, if you go to, if you have, if you host an event in like the U.S. or um, somewhere in the in Europe, you tend to have a much more international crowd. So you can actually have people cheering for every team, which is great. But anyways, Jace is going to get a scout in the main base. He's going to see that there are some barracks, but he's not necessarily going to see the fact that there are three more barracks on the way. So this is a five racks all in coming in from Dream in this game number two. And I feel like this is well warranted. He's gotten enough damage done with those eight probes going down that despite the fact that Kronos exist and despite the fact that Jace, again, he doesn't have his third just yet, but despite the fact that he got it pretty much immediately after he took that damage, Dream has maintained a worker lead for quite a while. I remember this is in fact a terran that has double mules that uh, the uh the observer will go down uh, the economy of dream is even more superior than up six workers and we can see what's happening right here he's up four or five hundred minerals a minute the gas is just about equal these stocks they're going to try to do something but they don't have blink so they really do not represent all that well i'm sorry they do have blink. what am i saying uh but there's not a lot of them and uh, the tank shots knock them down. JC loses a couple stalkers. Maybe he rotates over to the right, to the, the north side, and tries to put pressure on that base. But I feel like the pressure from Dream is going to be coming very soon here. He's got a Raven to disable the Colossus. He's got Steam just about done. Combat shields plus one. All those wonderful things. And he's on five racks. He's going to be able to build a lot of stuff coming, rallying across the map. I'm almost surprised we don't see him mining out the, the mineral wall. Just to make his pressure that much faster. It seems like it's a little bit less chunky of a, of a rally, but whatever. Dream now. It's a big army on the middle of the map. Good force fields, but only gets a single Marauder. And now the Bio tries to stim through it. And there we go. There's table on one Colossus, but not the second just yet. And in fact, Dream's not going to commit to it because, well, he wants to wait until he's sure that he's going to be able to actually play the fight and not just get guided backwards into a corner. But now we see three tank shots and, well, tanks annihilate Colossus. They have that bonus range. So three tanks here, a fourth one rallying across. And this push from Dream is terrifying. Now a couple Marauders a stim in, tapping down at the very least the uh, the shield battery, which is what you want. The bio stims forward. There we go. That's the disable on the Colossus, but the third one joins the ranks. Now this Raven is all the way tapped out. So it's all on the tanks now. The Zealots, though, they're mostly going down. One Colossus has fallen. Here come the Marauders stimming in. The one Colossus that is still able to do damage. Well, it gets knocked down as well. Final Colossus hits the deck. And these Zealots, they're going to try to do something, but just as the Marines arrive. And again, remember... This is five wrecks. This is a lot more at a time than Jishi may have been expecting. And Dream, he ties it up now. It's 1-1 one, one at DPG, GGG. There are enough Gs in that, uh, in these, in these names. I don't know. In the upper right, folks, in the, in the blue, he's the winner of the ACC and Valencia 2. It's dark. In the upper left, in the red. Can you make something happen here from Taiwan? It is nice. Hey, Ramekins89. My question for you. What do you store in your Ramekins? Uh, I use one of mine as a salt cellar. All right, you may, my roommates use a couple more of mine as uh, fruit fly traps. Yes.
Dark is the salutatorian of StarCraft, apparently. Although, as I say, I mean, I think right now... Is he... I think by now, I think it's fair to say Dark is the best player in Korea right now. It's by a slim margin because you have Maru, who recently got the G5L, but Maru and Dark have played three times in finals this year. No, sorry, two times in finals this year. And... Dark has won 4-3 both times. So it's a narrow margin. But when the uh, the chips are down on the table and what other pithy sportscasterism things we can say, uh, it seems like Dark is just a little bit better. Do I, have, do I ever eat ramen out of a ramekin? Well, that'd be a very small amount of ramen. Um, but I do eat it out of a ramenkin. Uh, behavior SC2. Although, that actually... Mm, is a ramenkin someone who identifies as being ramen and then that would be cannibalism, kind of? I mean, if you identify as ramen, therefore, you're not identifying as human, so... Okay, this is going too dark. <laughs> this, this is gonna get... This is gonna get Bayo cancelled, because I'm... I promise I'm not advocating eating people who identify as, you know... Identify as ramen. We're okay. I mean, there was a serial killer, I think, that went and tried to find people who were okay with being eaten. And he found a couple, but there are laws against that kind of thing. Now, where it gets a little more interesting is if, and I think there was someone that did this, where he cut off his own leg and ate it because, like, he had to do some sort of amputation thing, like he had a problem. I forget the story, but, you know, he ate himself. And at that point, like... I don't know. There, there is a company that actually, when when you die, you can go and you can have them turn you and turn yourself into wallets and, and belts and things, which is just really creepy. I mean, I understand informed consent, whatever, but yeah. Um. <laughs> uh. Not gonna look, I'm not going to Google that one too far, though, because that ruins my br <laughs> That ruins my my search history. And yes, now I'm going to have... If I ever do that, I'm going to have someone that, you know, is... is my, my personal FBI agent is going to be... Come knock, knock, knocking on the door. But anyway, Dark's got his lair on the way now. We should start talking about this game just a little bit more. His nice is gone. Very quick three... Not even super quick three nexus but it's an incredibly defensive three nexus setup he's not taking the pocket or he's not taking the forward base instead he's opted into the less efficient mining pattern of mining out the mineral block and taking the pocket base which means well as a protoss he only has one position that he needs to defend and honestly stargazers is a very good pvz map you can play very defensively you only have that one attack vector you have to defend and nice is going greedy for all he's worth. He's got two forges on the way before the five minute mark. His upgrades, if he gets away with this, are going to be very, very good. And then when we talk about roaches versus stalkers, lings versus zealots, well, nice will be able to really take the positive trades there for the most part. But Dark is not interested in something that goes late. That's something that allows nice to get away with all of his greed in this game. No. We got a Nidus network on the way pretty much immediately. And lings, they find their way into the natural and the main base on top of it so dark gets the full scout off he's gonna start to do some probe damage here he knows exactly what his opponent's doing and he's gonna be very happy about his decision to go for a ling queen nidus because well it's just oracles defensively oracles and stalkers and well lings and queens they fight those very well indeed the one problem if we're gonna call it a problem is the fact that i'm not sure the dark has vision in his opponent's main base he was not able to keep the lings alive long enough ideally Dark would have been able to go and sex off a couple Lings into a dark spot and make that happen. But Lings now kill the Adept and the Nidus is on the way. It's just going to be a full frontal pressure here. And the Nidus, instead of getting past the defenses of Nice necessarily, they are the Queen Delivery Mechanism. The Ling Delivery Mechanism. So now here come Lings and Queens. But the creep spread is not quite there just yet. So the Queens have to be a little bit careful. There we go. Okay, looks like one Ling 
There, Zilnaga actually just dropped the knight. That's really cool. So we're going to see the cyber core go down at the front. Eventually, shield battery overcharge is popped. And the force field is actually delaying a lot of service here. So yes, the, the stalker will fall, but it is really delaying the damage coming in from dark for the most part. But now the creep's starting to spread a little bit further forward. The oracles are not staying alive all that much. Yes, yes, the shield battery popped. And it looks like the knight is on the right side was dealt with for the most part but just drop a knight is in their face that seems to work out pretty well for dark oracles and void rays are going to try to knock it down but these lings and these queens are causing so many problems for nice at this point now that being said the force fields are doing a good job here of forcing of delaying this push from dark but eventually they're just not going to be enough force fields and you're gonna, not going to want to warp in that many more sentries because they don't kill things so it's going to be zealots now and the queens are going to knock these down pretty easily shield batteries burning out of energy pretty much as soon as they spawn and yes there will be a shield battery overcharge eventually this fight has gone on long enough there it goes but that's just when you back up if your name is dark you wait for your spines to complete you wait for more queens to bob out you wait for more lings you wait for these bailings to be ready and if the force fields are not perfect nice he's done a good job of holding thus far but i'm worried about round two so here come the spines they're gonna knock this gateway down at the very least but look at the lay multi-layer defense coming in from nice at this point he's got a lot of cannons behind but here come the bailings and that force field is going to be absolutely fantastic the bailings they're going to find maybe their target in the mineral line but i'm not even sure they want that necessarily they want to knock down this stag defense and they will be denied that privilege and it's now really all down to the queens and the spines which again are powerful indeed and especially there with just the overseer uh, sieges itself up gets even more vision and there's yet more penetration into the natural of nice at this point but remember folks Nice is on three bases. He's on 55 probes. If he can find some way to stabilize, he's going to be in a good spot, but he only has two voids. In fact, only one void rate right now as one goes down. He's got another one on the way, but I'm not really seeing him go and transition into something that feels like a hold. It's just a bunch of slow zealots. It's oracles, it's void rays, and the queens, there are so many of them at this point that they're not really having to drop their transfuses for the most part, which means that the oracles and the void rays will not kill them off. And there we go. That's the last of the stack defense. Nice has committed so much to keeping this third base alive and it does not appear to me that nice will be able to keep the third base alive after all so void rays fall and the knight is in the main base well it's gonna start to put pressure on another mineral line so this is effectively a one base protoss at this point and the lings they run away now they they run back into the mineral line the third base is broken for nice and dark moving on to the next level of his attack he's got roach worn on the way he's running up behind this and while nice does have these 51 probes He's only on two bases. And remember, two bases, maximum saturation is 48. So Dark, uh, Nice is oversaturated. Yeah, yeah, he's fully saturated on two bases and Dark is not quite there just yet, but this worker lead from Nice is not quite as significant as it might look at first glance. But Nice does go down to low ground. Remember, he does have 1-1. One, one on the zealots and the stalkers and everything that he has on the ground and that is something that is pretty significant it does make these links not fight all that well but dark is now closing out the map he wants to make sure that nice is not going and taking a ninja gold or something as, as an approach to get back into this game so nice he's constrained on two bases there we go changeling on the high ground is this gonna be Nidus? maybe we're gonna have to see behind this roaches and roaches and roaches on the way dark adding melee adding roach speed uh looks like a pro went down to the low ground and the spine plucked it out but here comes the attempted break void rays on the top of the queens are just transfusing everything the spines and themselves so the void rays will fall on the spines here they're doing a great job so nice he does have charge and these zealots do have one one so they are powerful indeed and the roaches are not just here yet but the knight is well this is certainly a place for queens to retreat to so dark probably doesn't want to lose all these queens he's going to run away run away back to the knight it's nice does clear out his natural or his third base whatever you want to call it but and it's a big but there is a metric ton of creeps right here dark is on four bases now we're just about he's droned back up to about 60 workers and yes while nice does have the significant upgrade lead his 2-2 is going to be done right around the same time that dark's plus one is feels like you need a little bit more than that Ooh, fancy there nice has <laughs> nice has his robo bay blocked or his robo facility blocked there by <laughs> by the changeling 
Nice job there, Dark. It's just a little bit of something. There's another night that goes up because remember, Dark has a vision of everywhere in nice space. He knows where everything is. And there we go. Nice pops out and roaches are here to defend it. Here come the Queens. And it's really just one Oracle in the sky. They knock that one down almost immediately. So roaches are here. Ravages are here. And well, nice is not. Dark takes game number one. Puts DPG up two to one in the series. In the bottom right, folks, in the right, he's up one game to zero. He is for DPG, one of their many aces. It's dark. Dark, dark, dark. On the north side of the map, in the red. He held on, but not long enough. It is nice. So where does Dark go in this game number two? Uh, behavior, I didn't. Unfortunately, um, Pig was... It's just never on when I'm watching Twitch for the most part. And I've been busy with other... I went and, you know, I went and played uh, Ultimate in the afternoon. It was a good time until the wind came in. It got very cold towards the end of things. Um, why? Were, were there were there any games I need to make sure I need to go watch? The most famous fictional cannibal is named Hannibal. Hannibal the Cannibal. You can talk about that instead of the game. Unfortunately, I have not seen. Uh, was it Silence of the Lambs that is that has Hannibal? I've not seen it. I grew up under a rock, in fact. And while my parents did give me somewhat of an education in old movies, they weren't big fans of horror type movies, even if they're classics. So I've not seen The Exorcism. I have not seen Silence of the Lambs. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm uneducated. It's always fun, actually, when I uh, talk about how much un I grew up under a rock. It's always fun um, casting with zombie grip. Because, oh, that finds me on the main base here. And we get to one worker. Is it going to get a second? Uh, no, no, it's not. But it looks like the adept should be able to escape out of here. But as I say, that queens and lings are going to look. Yeah, the adept gets up. He gets very low, but does get out. So, hey, I don't, no, never mind. It doesn't because there are lings in the natural. Nice job there, Dark. Corrals it. Gets a couple more lings than you might normally expect and does punish. Nice for his uh, early aggression, his early scouting. But yeah, it's always funny. It's always fun when I cast with a zombie grub in particular because she'll make some sort of cultural reference knowing that I don't get it. I'm like, <laughs> thanks. And not even necessarily knowing that I don't get it, but, it, you know, it's, it's a good time. Um,. Sometimes I feel really proud of myself because I do get the reference, but Lings now they're going to try to knock this Adept down and it's getting very low. So the Adept is dead, but that's a really nice pylon positioning behind the wall. So the Lings are not going to be able to knock this down super quickly. And there comes a second Adept, but the rewall is there. And yeah, I, that's a bit of an awkward rewall. We're going to have to see Nice just go and cancel everything. But even still, he gets Adept, he gets a rewall. And that is, uh, it's just a little bit of something. It's a little bit more money than Dark, than Nice would have liked to spend at this point in the game. And Dark, he's got a pretty early Roach Warren on the way. But, ooh. Nice. Okay, there we go. Double Stargate. It's a four-minute double Stargate. This is the first tech we've seen from this game. So, this is very interesting. Coming in from Nice. And I'm sorry, I said, I guess te technically Warp Gate is the first bit of tech we've seen in this game. But let's be real. You get Warp Gate every game. The first... Deviation of tech. But Nice is going to hide this behind five, uh, five adept pressure. And the funny thing is, this is the Patty Mac build. Pat, this is how Patty Mac killed Scarlet. You go, you get adepts on the map, you shade in, and if he loses one adept, if he loses one adept in recalls, you know he's been watching the Patty Mac vods because that's what Patty Mac does. Um, but yeah, there we go. Adepts on the map, no glaives, and behind this, Devil Stargate Phoenix. And of course, you want to hide this as long as possible because Dark it can respond to this. The math says you get, want to get one spore per base, one spore per Stargate per base. So, Devil Stargate Phoenix, you get, oh, 
Oh, my, we've lost my face. Hopefully it comes back pretty soon. But the math says you go get you get one Stargate per Phoenix or one Star or one Spore per Stargate. So if you don't know how many Stargates there are, the first sweep in a Phoenix can get a decent amount of damage. There we go, folks. I'm back. Depths, they shade, they shade backwards, actually. They shade defensively. And here comes the aggression from Dark. Considering Nice is committed so hard to this double Stargate play, with the Roaches here and the Ravagers as well, this may be just a pretty easy build for Dark to make something happen. Now, the Phoenix will arrive, but the problem with Phoenix is when they get lifted... Oh, that Bile's going to very much lift, very much miss. When the Phoenix lifts something, you can just Bile the Phoenix down, but Dark instead is knocking down the static defense, and the Ravagers will continue to fall, but Dark only needs them to make sure that he knocks down the defense here, and actually, those Biles are going to land very well indeed, so here come the Lings. Yeah, you know what? Phoenix can deal with the Ravagers well enough, but you know what? They don't fight. They don't fight Lings whatsoever. I mean, what's the point? You're going to lift one Ling and half a supply. It does not work out. So Lings getting surrounds pretty much on everything. And Dark's got 24 more Lings on the way, but I don't see much of any reinforcements arriving at this point. He feels like he's done enough. He's going to depower the gateway, and there we have it. Yeah, Nice realizes that despite the fact that Dark's droned up behind this, it's not going to be enough. And Dark two zeros, I think, as expected. Which means now the DPG needs one more map to make sure they take the week. And folks, in the bottom left here, in the red for Dragon Phoenix Gaming. His name, Hero. Yep, right side of the map, in the gold. He is for good game game. He's got a 2-0 this. It's a ratata. Ratata. I don't know. It's a Pokemon. I never played Pokemon. One of these Pokemans, one of those Nintendos. I'm sure there are plenty of people that that made that that um that that makes sad but in fairness to, the, to you all folks or in fairness to me i guess uh growing up i was allowed to watch Yu Gi Oh. i mean before we didn't have tv at all um because i didn't have tv from ages 12 to 16 17 something like that um but when we still had a tv and when we still had uh, some sort of a cable direct tv type connection i was allowed to watch Yu Gi Oh, which is again literal demon summoning but Pokemon was was above was uh, above the board. That was that was too far. So, and I was not allowed to have any game console growing up. So, even if I could buy it myself, it didn't happen. So I never really got into Pokemon. Not in the prime ages of people getting into Pokemon. I mean, I enjoyed the show a little bit, but you go back and watch it now as an adult, and it's kind of repetitive. When uh, back, remember the the times when Twitch did like it ran through like every Pokemon season ever. Like, oh, this is fun enough, but. It didn't hit me in the nostalgia because I never had that nostalgia. So I'm sure like Kalaris and Wardy are just someone's gonna someone sends them this clip and they're just gonna be like, okay, Bay ba was banned. We're not working from with them anymore. Talking uh, talking badly about Pokemon. How could he? Well, I'm sorry. I blame my the rock I grew up under. But okay, here we're going Stargate in this game on Waterfall, and uh, the only reason that's even somewhat surprising is the fact that it's waterfall it's a short map often we see glaives on this map but that that storyline i've been pushing is actually a little bit less true than it has been in recent weeks we're seeing more stargate play whether it's just because you want to play counter to the idea or well protoss are just not going for twilight nearly as much or not going for gladeps nearly as often as they might have had is uh oh Dep do a little bit of juke here is it gonna get any work yeah getting right on top he gets two workers is he gonna get a third well no no, he's not, but he's going to... Oh, no, he does. Never mind. I am I spoke too soon, Hero. How could I? I'm so horrible. But three workers do go down. And then already, uh, three workers for one adept. You take that. That is fantastic damage coming in from uh, from Hero early on. And the Oracle, well, you want to know who has the best Oracle control in the world? Now the trap's gone. Certainly it's Hero. Most of the time. Sometimes he's got a bad day and he loses Oracles. But in general, his Oracle Micro is absolutely sparkling so oracle dives in is going to get a couple more workers make it five and gets out not taking too much damage on the hull of things but no third base is just yet and well he's thinking about it but the lings that show up make that a little bit harder so well the adepts they run over try to knock some lings down and they're going to cancel that shade so this third base should get up pretty nicely in fact oracle is going to have to turn on its pulsar beam after all which is not what you want you're trying to maintain as much energy as possible but you'd rather get your third base up then uh then not go and maybe get up one or two more drones uh, getting the third base up is rather important for for the protest player so hero he gets his third base now on the way going up to triple oracle which does mean that 
any sort of aggression that he might want to go for with Blink Stalkers is going to be a little bit delayed. And, well, we got to point this out. There's no Twilight on the map just yet. He's He's got, there we go. Twilight's on the way now. But this means this is going to be about a 7, 7.30, minute Blink. Not anything even sooner. Is now the Adepts are going to complete their shade. Or, excuse me, they're just going to get recalled out. And Hero, he's gotten, what, seven, eight probes or eight drones over the course of this game already, which... You know, one, two here or there doesn't seem like all that much, but when you put it all together, it's starting to get a lot more. He's going to get, oh, he's going to get three here. Nice positioning. Does he get a fourth? Does he get a fourth here? Ratata, he can't. Oh, oh no. He picked his pocket. And here come the Oracles. Now, Hero knows exactly where the Queens are. Because he saw how many were defending that third base. But the Oracles feel like they do have to go home because, well, there are only two Adepts here. And honestly, that that positioning on the Adepts and the Pylons is not incredible for the Lings now. But the Oracles coming back. They got to run away. Honestly, burning. Yeah, he's he's just styling them just just a tiny bit, just a little bit. And the adepts show up once again. A couple, three more workers go down. And by the way, at this point, the adepts are not supposed to get this much done. There is no glaives. It's just two adepts. But hero is finding the openings, and he's killed 15 workers over the course of this game. Maybe even more. I don't have the exact number, but he's killed a lot of workers. And there's just the the two adepts by two adepts are just slowly nickel and diming. Uh, rats is not out of this game. Oh, by the way, the, the triple Oracle, they're going to find this fourth base. They're going to force a cancel on it. Maybe even a kill. I'm not sure. <clears throat> but again, more damage here. Adepts find their way into the base. And this time it should only be two, which is kind of the, the bog standard, right? But because of this, Ratata has 50 workers in the Oracle. They're going to fly. In. Oh, they're going to get so much more. Six workers fall and it's going to be even more than that one. Yeah, everything's going down. Eight probes. And yes, you lose an Oracle, but yeah, gladly tread out in Oracle's life for the amount of damage that Hero just got done. He's going to get even more. This is... This is... Ratchetot may just be dead because of this. This is 25-ish dead dead drones before the seven-minute mark. Hero's up 14 workers on the Zerg who has three bases. And when we look at it, a two-base Zerg versus two-base Protoss, obviously the Protoss is going to have more because of the, the scaling, how much Chrono scales compared to Inject. But when you get that third base... The Zerg very much wants to... They, they get ahead of the Protoss pretty quickly indeed. And one of the things you'll see, say, Steadfast, for example, uh, talk a lot about is the, the point the time, the point in the game, the time in the game where the Zerg surpasses the worker count of the Protoss. Well, we're seven minutes in and that still hasn't happened. So Hero, he's got Stalkers on the map. Fourth base on the way and charge about halfway done. Now, he's not going for what has been more common in PvZ recently, which is double forge. A very defensive play off of the early game aggression. Instead, he's playing more Valencia hero style, which is a lot of Blink Stalkers, lots of aggression, relying on that Blink to get damage done. And this is almost totally undefended fourth base. So the Stalkers, they're just going to tap it down. I think we might even just see a recall. But no, they're just going to run back to the safety of the Oracles. And Lings do not kill things. Well, Oracles kill Lings a lot faster than the Lings kill the Stalkers. So the fourth base down for Ratata once again. That's the second time it has been delayed. This time, though, it's a kill. And the Stalkers, hero loses one and loses two. Not really all that much. So what is Ratata's approach here? How does he find his way back into this game? He's down 13 workers. Now, he will find this fourth base, but there's a shield battery here. And the Stalkers and the Zealots will be able to deal with this one for the most part. Ratata does have plus one attacks. We've got that one going for him. Plus two attacks is actually going to be ready very soon. But I don't think he has a Baneling Nest. Or certainly he doesn't have Baneling Speed. And that means the plus two melee is not nearly as effective as it might have otherwise been. Okay, so here now, pressure on the third base, and the Queen's already kind of running away a little bit as Ratsata tries to bring his army together. But this is one of those timings where Ratsata actually has got something going for him. Because the army of Heroes split, yeah, supplies are somewhat similar, but Heroes got 
20 army supply on the north side with the zealots and the archon so leg run by is going to be very successful here but hero if he can find the damage he needs he will be able to invalidate that even still though okay fourth base is dead for for rats that's nice shield battery river shards the zealots warp in they force the lings back and well yes hero did not get the third base he kills the fourth he only loses his four probes and that counterattack that promised to be so problematic not really at all no the archons they're getting such juicy shots on this army and the zealot is doing a great job as well so one of these archons may go down but remember this got a base and it got a lot of damage done on this army as well that is certainly a sacrifice that hero is willing to make is now the archons they're all starting to fall but the stocks can just blink on top of this army there we go hero that's what you want now we're gonna see biles go down but hero Micros was way out of that for the most part a couple biles hit but ratata is eradicated in game number one and that is a 4-1 lead for dpg well not even a 4-1 lead that is a week one week seven victory for dpg in the north side of the map folks in the red he's up one game to zero he's got the best pvz in the world it's hero and the bottom left in the goal just fighting for pride at this point well it's the ratata So we saw Hero go back into his old hero style for just a little bit. We're going to have to see if he goes for it once again. Tropical Sacrifice, I don't think so. Not quite as much. It's a much bigger map. It's a little bit harder to be aggressive on. But again, that hero style that we saw uh, with the delayed plus one and just a lot of blink stalkers and no robo, that's become a bit of an anachronism in modern Protoss plays. Ooh, Hero, he's faking a cannon rush. And there's actually, where this can be a cannon rush. But if it is, it will be a gate first one, which of course does mean Robo follow up. But for now, I think this is just a fake. Hero does not strike me as a player that does go for the cannons. There we go. There's the cancel. Okay. There's no forge coming down. But he does force a probe off or a drone off the line and dies a little bit of mining time. But unfortunately for Hero, Ratsata does not bite nearly as much as Hero would have liked. I mean, if he pulls four probes to kill the, uh, to kill or poor drones to kill the pylon before it completes, yeah, that's worth it for Hero. But as it stands, just puts him a little bit behind. But anyway, talking about that hero style we saw in game number one, the style has moved on. In fact, or I should say Protoss play has moved on from that hyper-aggressive, almost TVZ style of PVZ, where you're just multi-pronging and being aggressive and never letting the Zerg think. Because Zerg, particularly Solar, has been kind of the leader of this, have figured out how to get into Hydra Ling Bane properly in a greedy enough manner where that pressure no longer works in Hydroling Bane against Pure Blink Stalker or just gateway units in general, not great. So we've started to see Protoss players more and more kind of open that style, but get double forge, stay defensive, still have the walls and be that enlightened style of Protoss, but they just sit at home and they get themselves up to storm, up to six to eight gas and max out on that ground army. And then when the Zerg gets aggressive, shield batteries and good Cannon positioning means that the Protoss can normally stay alive, and then they get into curious out of that. And it's just a bit of a different way to get into the late game where the Protoss player is is arguably stronger than the Zerg. A good example of this actually is how Prince played versus Solar uh, last uh, yesterday. Which actually ended up being a bit of an upset for Prince as he 2 0 Solar, which again, that is <laughs> that is not the expected result. <clears throat> So does Hero get as much damage done in game two as he does in game one with the Adept side? No, actually he's not, at least not for right now, because there are enough flings. Ratata, he gives us one a little bit more respect than we might have than we saw in that first game. But this actually, well, does force Lings out early, and that's economic damage in and of itself as the Oracle now tries to fly in. But I, the, the Lings actually on the map, they did see the Ling flying in. So yeah, well, the Oracle is going to get a worker or two. He's going to actually get a creep tumor, which is really nice, but that's going to be about it for the moment. So Hero is going to be forced out. But again, getting that creep tumor is really, really nice. It makes it a little bit harder for Ratsadad to establish total control 
of his main base, which is what you're looking for uh, when you go for something like that. You want to make sure that you have total vision on the main base and you're not committing overlords or something that can get sniped later on. And more importantly than vision, it's the fact that queens can circulate. Uh, queens are very slow off creep, and of course they cannot transfuse anymore off of creep. So you, you, you want to make sure you have just enough creep spread on the map that queens can run around and you can drop buildings in interesting positions. But Ratchet He's got that Evo Chamber on the way at the normal timing. So this is looking like it's going to be the 50-50 build. 50 drones, 50 lings, plus one melee. You hold off the first round of aggression from the Protoss, and then, well, it goes from there. But the Oracles dive in. They get two workers, and there's a Spore here, and only one Queen, though. So this is prime real estate for Hero. Not even going to lose the first one, because he's a Chad like that. It goes down to about 5 HP, but, well, no more. And Hero playing a much greedier style in this game number two because it is tropical sacrifice it's a bit longer of a map it's a little bit harder to go and rail get too much done so he's gonna get a very much quicker plus one in fact his plus one started right around the same time of the blink remember in the previous game the forge was started right around the same time that blink was done hero really prioritized make sure he was active on the map and his stalkers were aggressive and powerful over getting that upgrade that you know it keeps it scales you but again, it's Tropical Sacrifice is a much bigger map. Even as it, as it doesn't have that many bases, it is much bigger and just in terms of total space. It's a little bit harder for Hero to do what he did in game number one. So you get that, you get the plus one a little bit faster. It's not going to be the 540 blink, but you get blink and plus one done by about six, six, seven minutes. And now, okay. Depths the shade in actually in two different bases here. So here is now starting to get the damage he wants. Six workers go down. And it's actually going to be even more. So seven seven drones fall for four depths. And now here come the triple oracle play. Now one is very low. So you got to be careful about making sure you keep the shields alive on that. But stay strapped. going to go down. Drones are going to get pulled away. And it doesn't look like it's going to get that much done. Okay. He has two drones. This stays strapped. Yeah, that's not going to be successful. Hero, he's been zoned out for the most part. But... He does force workers off the line. He does kill seven workers with the orc with the adepts. And ooh, this is a bit of an opportunity here. There is only a spore defending the third base, but Hero, no, he's just really he's got a one-track mind about these stasis traps. And that is gonna work out for him. He he traps out half the base. He traps out a queen, and that is very, very nice for our DPG Protoss player. And again, at this point, he doesn't need to win this map. He wants to because he needs them. He wants uh DPG wants map score again. They're fighting with onside gaming in first place for that first place spot, but they've already won the week. So at the very least, the worst they can do is tie for first. But as it comes down to it, at the end of things, every map, every week, every map, every point will matter as we start to look at playoff seating as the weeks continue to go on. This is true. This is not last game uh, burning where Ratata was down about 10 workers pretty much the entire game. We never saw the we never saw the Zerg uh go go up on workers for, against against Hero. And so while this has been pretty effective pressure coming in from Hero for the most part, Ratata has gotten himself into Hydraling Bane pretty effectively, which means that Hero is not going to be able to be nearly as aggressive on the map, but he's not even really trying to be. At least not right now. There's going to be a timing soon enough when we hit, when he has extended thermal lands. He does have plus two, but he's going for heavy Colossus play. And if your force fields are good, Blink Stalker Colossus, which is effectively what Hero has with a couple Oracles just to be a little bit more pressure. Blink Stalker Colossus against Hydraling Bane can be very powerful. Now, of course, the Banelings are the threat actually against that army and Banelings are not light units. You might think they are because they, they're made by Lings, which are light units and they're rather small, but they're not light units. Colossus do not do double damage against them. So the Lings and the Hydras, they certainly, they fall down against the the Colossus play for the most part. But if the Banelings, they get the connections on the Colossus, which is kind of what you're looking for. Well, that does it cause problems. Now the Oracles are going to show up, get a cancel on that prospective fifth base of Rats die. And also, Hero gets a scout on the Hydras. He's aware of what the tech is now. If he, I mean, I'm assuming he already was based on the fact that he's doing go, going double Robo Colossus. But if he had any questions, he does see those Hydras now. And he loses an Oracle. But again, those Oracles have gotten a lot, of, a lot done. So... Losing one at this point, not the end of the world. And Hero, though, uh, I don't know that he wants to be as active on the map as he's being. He doesn't have charge for these zealots. Feels like that's a bit of an oversight. And his extended thermal lance is not done. His plus two is not yet done. But he's starting to set up the... He's starting to set the table for his... We can call it, yeah, first all in. 
for this four colossus timing that he's looking to hit before hive is done and at the very least he's going to knock down at least some of the creep and rats uh, get himself set up for a bit of a counterattack. But it really is all about this pressure from Hero now. Ratsada may force Hero to be truly all in, but we're going to have to see. Is for right now, Cannon's shield batteries and stalkers are going to keep these links away. And oh, Colossus. Now it's a good scout by Ratsada. He's aware of what's happening. Drops the, the Lurker Den. But they get a lot of damage done on those links. They shred a significant amount of them. And that makes life just a little bit harder. But oh, so many Baneless. Scads and scads of Baneless come in. But those force fields are going to be fantastic. And the Colossus is sitting on top of everything. Well, they're causing problems. That being said, Hero, the one problem he has, he forgets that Protoss does not have a door, and he does it a lot. So we're going to see Hydra Den. It's going to fall down. So the Hydras that now exist on the map are the only Hydras we're going to see for a while. But the Ling run by is getting so much here. 13, 14 probes have hit the deck. And the Zealot Warpin forced at home, which, by the way, does not have charge. The Zealots cannot chase the army down really all that well at all lanes coming in for a counterattack in the backside but they're all going to get frozen the few that join the fray they're going to get knocked down pretty much immediately in those force fields on the banes they're keeping everything alive so hero he's lost his economy but he has won this game it's a 5-1 week for dpg and that's exactly what you want to see if you're a dpg fan